Coming to you live from the studios of the Sideshow Network, it's Rob Has a Podcast. And now, here's the show that is proudly presented by Tyler Perry, Rob Sisternino. Yeah, that didn't make sense. I gotta say, we'll, 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 we'll keep going, but that did not make sense. <laughs> Uh, hey, everybody, I am Rob Sisternino, and I'm totally thrown off for a number of reasons. One, that I'm not in my apartment. We're here at the Sideshow Network today because uh, that is much more conducive to having guests. And, of course, I am sitting here with a co-host today, and here she is. She is your reigning Miss Survivor, two-time Survivor player, and uh, the wonderful and amazing Andrea Belke is here. Andrea! Hello, thank you for having me. And in studio, I feel so fancy. Yes, well, it's great to have you here. You said you were going to be here in LA, and I felt like this was a good time to get together with you. We wanted to have you here on the show because we haven't talked to you since the last time we saw you. You were in an ATM booth as <laughs> being crowned Miss Survivor, and we have not even formally gotten you all of your Miss Survivor paraphernalia. So I wanted to present to you here in person. Here is your fancy... We have your Miss Survivor 2014, oh, look at uh, that. your sash. That there, there you go. Wait, should I wear it? <laughs> if, you, you if you want, we have a Miss. We have a Miss Survivor. <laughs> yeah. We have a Miss Survivor tiara for you oh, okay. as well, and we have some Miss Survivor buttons as well. Is, Rob, you've put a lot into we've this. We've spared no expense I for Miss Survivor. Um, I, actually, I will wear this. I think because. How does it look? Very good. Very good. Awesome. Because I also haven't showered, so I'm trying to like... I thought you said you weren't going to say that. <laughs> and I wasn't going to say that, but then... All right. Well, you, well, you're a survivor, <laughs> and you're, so you're used to that. All right. So Andrea is here, and this is going to be a very, very fun show. We're also going to be joined by... We have a guest with us here today in the studio. Vitas Bushkowskis is here, and we're going to talk to him for the first time, and, and hopefully he can live up to the high bar that Otis has previously set on Rob as a Podcast. I cannot wait to meet Vitas because I've not met him yet. I have met Otis, yeah. and he's great. So I think we're going to have a good show. I also did want to say thank you to everyone who voted. It was a really fun competition, and all the Rob has a podcast viewers and supporters are awesome and positive, and it was a really fun experience. All right. And I'm sorry that I was wait I was really drunk and tipsy. No, that was that. fun. It was, it was a little fun. That was fun. <laughs> okay, and so we are recording a video of this. It's not streaming live, but you can check out the video on robhaswebsite.com. I'll let you know if the video crashes or anything like that at the end of the show and it, if it didn't work, but it should, you should be able to see the video of this interview. Also, then after we get done with this part of the show, I'm going to go over the voicemails with your friend from the Wine and Cheese Alliance. Eliza Orleans is going to be answering voicemails from the listeners of Rob as a Podcast, oh, and that's going to be very good fun. Good friend Eliza. Plus, yeah, <laughs> and plus, and you know how she gets on social media. Uh, plus, we are going to also get to a bunch of the inappropriate comments from last night's episode. Wonderful. So this is going to be a jam-packed fun show. Yes, let's do it. So how has your trip to L.A. been? It's actually been wonderful. I So I've been in New York for a few years and came out here for two weeks to kind of feel it out. And it's, I don't know, I think I might actually... Move here. You're going to make the jump. I might make the jump. I think I'm at a point in my life that I kind of want something new and there's opportunities here and I've had some meetings that have been going great and the hiking and the weather and the people and I, it might be time for that. So co-hosting Rob Has a Podcast today is one of the first hosting things you've done here in Los Angeles. Yes. I have a couple, I have two meetings tomorrow with some networks, but this is the first thing I've done here in Los Angeles. Have you put Miss Survivor on your resume? No, but it's in my Instagram description. <laughs> okay, that counts. That counts for something. Ooh, I got a ding. <laughs> yes. Now, the word on the street from Instagram is that you got to actually watch the show with a number of survivors last night. Yes. Uh, we had a viewing party at Oren Pelly's, and he's a huge Survivor fan, director of Paranormal Activity, and wonderful. And uh, let's see, who's there? Uh, we got Cha Cha out there. You we watched got, Survivor with Christina Cha. Got Cha Cha out there. We got Philip, the specialist. I called him up. Can I tell a, a very, a very funny, quick story yes. before we get into with um, Christina Cha? That the night of the that we did the Survivor roast. We were like there were pictures on on Instagram or whatever of like all the people and Christina Cha like asked, hey, oh, that looks like fun. I wish I could I could have been there. And then Tyson wrote in the comments. Yeah, we had a meeting about it and or, or uh, uh, there was a meeting about it and it was decided that you shouldn't come. I thought it was messed up. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of amazing. It's like that's such a Tyson that's thing. That's such a Tyson thing. <laughs> such a Tyson thing to do. <laughs> Burning Christina Chaw. So if Christina Chaw is listening, we did not have a meeting about that. Uh, so who else? Uh, Philip, the specialist, was there. Natalie, yes. Kenarelli. Oh, wow. This was like a whole... Did you guys uh, 
call Boston Rob on the phone. This was like a whole red eye reunion. Yeah, we did not call him. We should have though. Hey, but- you guys got <laughs> together. To, uh, hey, it's buddy system. I'm supposed to yeah. be notified if you guys ever get together. <laughs> I know. Uh, he was, but it was, did not invite Boston Rob. I don't even know where he is anymore. He's in Florida. He's right? in Florida with yeah. his little babies. I still get Christmas cards from him. Oh, that's very, that's very nice. Uh, yeah, very good. And anybody else? I think that was all of the survivors. But Penner? Oh, Penner? yeah, obviously. Yeah, Penner. And Penner's yes. friends with Oren. Yes, Penner was there too. And it's always fun. It's always fun to watch with survivors because you pause yes. after everything. You're like, okay, what do you guys think? What do you think of the secret idol? And so there's a lot of bickering going on about that. Yes, I was actually I was there one time uh, last or I guess during Caramo, and, and yes, it is like a, the whole thing. You get a pause, and then you can and then you can talk. Uh, it's and like, then also everyone wants to be on my season. This happened. Oh, I did yes, this on this season. Yes. I mean, with Philip, that's what you're gonna get. <laughs> All right, that's what happens. All right. All right, let's let's get into talking about the season. Now, let's bring in our guest today. Uh, here he is. Let's bring in Vetus. And Vetus, how are you doing? I'm doing wonderful, thank you. Yes, and Vetus did a good job pretending that he wasn't in the room for the last five minutes, so good job to you, Vetus. Well, you know, I was in the room, and I did some fact-checking while I was here, and unfortunately, you do not advertise your Miss Survivor on your Instagram, so I'm just going to call you out a little oh, bit on that right wait, now. Wait, hold on. I had I'm it sorry. on there. No. You know what? I did have it on there at one point. The only reason I took it down, why did I take it down? I don't know, but I was a little bit disappointed. You know, I'm meeting think, you for the you know, first time, and we're meeting under this guise of a lie. Okay, so. I'm gonna put it back on there. But actually, I did have it on for a second, but I think I took it off because then at one point I got paranoid that I was being braggy because I do that a lot. Yeah. Where I'm like, oh wait, my Twitter's like, oh, I'm doing this and this and this, and I have it on my Instagram. I'm like, maybe I'll just take it off for a second. You gotta own it. You know, I okay, voted. I, I voted it, for I'm, you. I'm so don't tell Sierra that, okay. but I did vote for you. Did you really? Yeah, I don't believe that. I did vote for you. All right, well, let's Uh-oh. get into Survivor uh, Kagiyan because I already can see the comments uh, mounting on the bottom of the page of people saying that we didn't talk about Survivor fast enough. So let's get into the episode a, li- a little bit le- uh, from last night. And let's talk about what was going on with the whole thing with the immunity idol and Spencer and Tony. And I would love to get your sense uh, from both of you guys of did Spencer have to change what he did based on what Tony was doing last night? Tony's bag of tricks. Wait, hold on. Did Spencer have to change what he was doing? Did Spencer change the way he was going to play the immunity out? Did Spencer get played by Tony at Tribal Council? Oh, I see what you mean. I'm so, yeah, I'm so confused about all of that. I I think Spencer, I think Spencer was originally going to play it on himself no matter what. And I didn't, it, it was weird. The whole like him, Tony bringing the idol out and then saying it was fake. And I'm really confused about that, and I kind of need someone to explain it to me. Yeah, so, Please explain this to us. So basically what happened is that Tony wanted to, 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 to give, you know, Spencer brought out the idol, and Tony wanted to make him think that, oh, you're going to play an idol? Well, I'm going to play it. Like, I'm not like, making him think he expected he was going to play it. So basically Tony wanted to scare Spencer into using it on himself. That's all. Tony really wanted to do and Spencer really had a 50-50 shot and I know Spencer's a smart guy and I believe that Spencer's probably one of the smartest people out there still and I know he was probably running the numbers as 50-50 him or Jeremiah so unless he knew he was going to go to Jeremiah unless he was really tipped off he had to play it for himself he and there was, there was really no other option for him and that's what I thought to it he's going to play it on himself because that's the worst thing if you're going to play an idol on someone else and then you're voted out well isn't the worst <laughs> thing when you have the idol and you don't play it and then you get voted out isn't that the worst thing yeah that's pretty bad <laughs> yeah I think I mean it's a 50-50 guess but I do think that they laid down they, they fell on the sword a little bit too quick there they they had Jeffra and when Jeffra came with that whole honesty thing I'm not going to be with you I'm going to be with my other alliance they could have played this whole well at least you know Jeremiah could have gone at least tell me you're going to vote for me at least tell me that and then she could have been the one that spilled the beans and then they would have known who they're going to vote for I mean they could have got more information from her instead of just letting her go back with her alliance well she approached Jeremiah who I don't know what's going on in his head and it was the cutest little scene ever you know Uh, I don't think I'm going to vote with you is that okay and he's like that's okay I didn't know you did impressions you did Jeremiah and Jeffra yeah oh wow you are Miss Survivor but it was so funny because wouldn't I would think that when Jeremiah told Spencer and Tosh about that wouldn't they want to go to Jeffra again and convince her more? It was very odd the whole thing that happened where they all sort of just you know laid down and died. Once Jeffra was like, oh, I'm not gonna vote with you guys, or like, and Jeremiah was like, Oh, that's cool, well, you know, okay, whatever. Um, and they were all just like 
dealing with it. And I felt like that seemed very unsurvivor like to not try to. Well, I guess they felt like they had plan B, which was, OK, we're going to get them with the idol. OK, so we'll, we'll you know, we have the 50 50 chance of this idol plan working. And I think they put all their eggs in that idol basket rather than try to convince anybody else to, you know, go back. And of course, there's a lot we don't see. I know. I was just really surprised there wasn't a scene of them talking, okay, who are they going to play it on, Spencer or Jeremiah? Were they, were they so sure that Spencer was getting it played on? Yeah, I think I think they could have done a lot more with that. They could have used Jeffra because she was forthcoming with that. I'm not going to vote with you. Jeremiah could have you know, done this plea of, well, at least tell me if I'm going to be the one to go. And then she might have said, okay, you're going to be the one. And then Spencer could have given it to Jeremiah. It's- or they could have maybe done some subtle politicking to try to sway the vote one way or the other, made it better than 50-50. But it's tough. No, exactly. I know what you mean. I'm like They should have actually used Jeffer in that moment to get more information. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, if you're Spencer and you have the idol, unless you're convinced it's not you, you got to play it for yourself. I want to talk about this Tyler Perry idol, which everybody uh. everybody's talking about. And I want to talk about it especially because Miss Survivor is here. And Miss Survivor, I think that this is all your fault. <laughs> Why is that? Because Jeff Probst got a text from Tyler Perry after Survivor Caramoan finished airing. And that text said, hey, I've been watching the show. I think that people should get to play the idol after the votes are read. And going back and looking at what Tyler Perry must have seen to make him say that, the only thing that makes sense is that Tyler Perry said, I like this, I like this blonde girl, Andrea, <laughs> that she should have gotten, she had an idol. That stinks that she got voted out. She should have been able to play her idol after the votes got read. I like that theory. I'm going to have to tweet it. I mean, is, is there anything else that makes sense? No. No, there's absolutely nothing else that makes sense. I think that might be So t- apparently, Tyler Perry loves Andrea. Yay. And then he got pissed that she got voted out with an idol. And he said, that's it, Jeff. He, he got on his phone and texted Jeff Probst, you need to change the rules. Because this is messed up that this girl that I liked had to get voted out and she had an idol. And so then they invented this thing. Or they brought it back from mothballs. I mean, I'm I am totally on board with that theory, and I also, but I don't like that. I don't like the special idol. <laughs> so I'm not, I mean, I think as a player, yes, if you find a special idol, that's awesome. Your world is rocked. But just as a viewer, I don't, I don't like it. But it's your fault. It's my fault. Okay, fine. It's my fault. I created this thing. I'm this so sorry. Your fault. I should have played the idol. Okay, I get it. I'm laying this at your feet, Andrea, and now we have to deal with it. All right, I take all responsibility for this. So now, what do we do? Okay, so now Tony. We gotta get a bigger celebrity than Tyler Perry to text Jeff. Who? Impossible. (laughs) Impossible. There is nobody bigger than Tyler Perry. So, how do we now? Tony has the idol. Is it just, you know, a done deal that Tony is now in the final four and there's nothing anybody can do about it? Yep, Tony's in the final four. I mean, I, have, I, I don't see a scenario, unless Tasha or Spencer continue to win immunity, I don't see a scenario in which the people that he's with turn on him or he doesn't make it two times in a row. Because with the idol, he's guaranteed at least one safe. And I just, he's in the majority. They seem pretty strong. He's in the end. And I'm also really confused. Okay, this is why, going back to that whole idol thing, this was at a viewing party. I watched the episode once, and I was also a couple glasses of wine in. Okay. Well, I missed the portion of the, he brought his idol out to scare Spencer, to throw him off. And then he said, well, this is fake. So, so does everyone else think that, that Tony pulled out a fake piece of thing? Is, I mean, he's going to go back to camp and what? Say, oh, yeah, that was a fake, a fake idol. I think that's what the plan is for Tony. How, do, how does anybody, why is he still here? <laughs> wouldn't you just, wouldn't everyone be like, okay, this guy is psycho. Like he's crazy and he runs around like a little scurrying rat. I'm just surprised he's still in the game. Well, I think that there's sort of a fine line right now of that. I think that the people that are with Tony think, oh my God, like first off, I think they think we control the numbers here. Even if it's just Tony, I think that we think we have him cornered. And I think they feel that Cass and, and Trish and to a lesser degree, Jeffra and maybe Wu think, okay, we have Tony figured out. We know where where he is. He can't out he can't outnumber us. And so I think they feel like they have him under control. And if he's like, you know, tricking the other people or lying to the other people, I guess that's fine. And I think that they think they're going to get rid of Tony eventually. And when they get down to, you know, four and three, you know, they can, you know, they can go without Tony. And then I think maybe they're also thinking 
that Tony is so irritating <laughs> and so annoying that he's the fill-up of this season. And we saw this a lot with Shamar in Survivor Karamoan, where people said, okay, we're going to keep him around for as long as possible because there's no way he can win in the end. And Cass even said that last night about how, you know, every time you vote out somebody that's annoying, you're screwing yourself. So he's so annoying. So if we vote him out, we're screwing ourselves. And so it, maybe they either think that they either have him outnumbered or at worst, they can beat him in the end. I know, but it's what came up last Tribal Council was also that Tosh and Spencer all said they were going to vote for Tony. I mean, that was their plan. There's obviously that was their plan to throw everything up and cause a stir. Good. I'm glad you brought this up too because I want to talk about th this as well. And I want to get back to some ways to possibly diffuse to cut the the blue wire on the Tyler Perry idol and and set and allow it to safely be diffused before the final four. Okay, so. Going back to this, so last night at Tribal Council, Spencer says, all right, hey, you guys, you can uh, you know, go with Tony, but just so you know, if you get to the end with Tony, we're all voting for Tony. We're all voting for Tony, and we will, all, that's three votes for Tony right there if you take him to the end, because he played the best game, and he's playing all of you guys. In Survivor Blood vs. Water, uh, Vetus, you were in a similar situation, okay? And there was Tyson, but you took the exact opposite approach and said, hey, if you guys uh, don't work with, with me or whatever, Tyson, if you don't save me, I will not give you my vote, okay? Which is basically, you know, the uh, almost the exact opposite argument to make to where, you know, one is I'm gonna, re I'm gonna give something to Tony if, if we get to the end or if you get to the end with him and you're saying to Tyson, I'm not gonna vote for you if you get to the end. So what is the better strategy? Oh, wow, that's a really, really good question. I think that um, it's a little bit apples to oranges, but I think it's you know two sides of the same coin. I think Spencer had a great argument at Tribal, telling them, "Hey, we're going to vote for Tony." He called out the leader, and I mean, when I when it, my time was up, I tried to call Tyson out just as hard. I said, "Tyson's running it. You guys need to know if you don't get him out, you know, he's going to take this thing to the end." And um, I just, I really don't, you know, going back to Tony, and I don't think he's as annoying as America thinks. I really, he's not like Russell Hans, where by the end everybody hated him. I, you still see this likability at tribe camp. You still see people getting along with him, believing in him, wanting to hang out with him. Even though we see his side interviews and we are like, this guy is duplicitous to the nth degree, I don't think the other people see that with him. So he still has a certain likability there that is not, you know, as irritable as, you know, Russell Hans or Philip or Shamar or some people like that. Now, Philip on the island, now he did, he was irritating to people at home, but also was irritating, like a lot was made on the show that he was irritating. Only Cass has called Tony annoying on the show so far. Yeah, yeah I do, I agree with you. I think people actually kind of like Tony, or it, maybe it's like an eye roll thing. You're like, oh, Tony, like what is he doing? Scurrying off. But it does seem like people, he's not a hated person like a Russell Hans. Okay. The whole thing with not voting for Tyson, and you did not vote for Tyson in the end, and, and I actually won my Survivor Fantasy League last season because you got two points for a jury vote, and your jury vote for Monica actually made me win my Fantasy League. So thank you very much for that, Vetus. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, so uh, now, uh, so many different things I want to talk about with, with that also, but I know I got I to stay focused on, on, on one thing at a time. It's um, hard. It's hard. So... You know, the the pain of, hey, Tyson, I'm not going to vote for you if, you if you get to the end didn't change anything. He's not he's not going to do anything different. I wonder if you can sort of like use the like, hey, if you don't overthrow your leader, then I'm going to then you, you will you will lose the game because you didn't overthrow your leader. I think it, it's really early to start talking about who's getting the jury votes at this point. As a, as a strategic point on the beach, as a viewer, you can start thinking about it. Okay, who's going to get whose votes? Who likes who? Is it a bitter jury? Is it a strategic jury? But I think when you're there, you're still just focused on getting to the end. And when I told Tyson, there's no way I'm going to vote for you if you don't let me stick around one more vote, I think that in, at no point did he even consider that as, okay, I'm going to lose Vetus's vote, not a big deal. He just needed to get further in the game. Now, in your mind, is that an empty threat when you say that, or do you 100% mean it? Um, in that moment, I 100% mean it. But then you get voted off, you go to Ponderosa, you get some food in your belly. But and you for carry me, through with it. But if for different reasons altogether, in, in fact. Um, 
Well, on one hand, I wanted to make that threat be a viable threat should I get to come back in the game and play again. But on the other hand, talking to everybody at Ponderosa, I knew it was going to be 8-0 Tyson. I knew Tyson had it, and I just didn't think Jervis deserved second place. I did not think Jervis deserved a tie for second place. So mm-hmm. I wanted to honor Monica because she had won so strong in the immunity challenges, and which is a big reason why I gave her that vote for second place. Now, when Spencer says, okay, that's three votes right here that are all going to Tony if he gets to the end, do you think that's an empty threat? Or do you think that he will carry through with that if Tony gets to the end? And here's what's what was great about how Spencer put it. It, was, it wasn't a threat. It wasn't like, we're going to take our votes from you and give them to Tony. It was, we believe Tony's running the show. And we are going to vote for the person who's running the show. It wasn't a threat of, we're going to take our votes from you. He never implied that they even deserved a vote. So I, th- I think it was just, he stated it in a way that seemed it so natural and so honest where it made people think, oh, wait, maybe I actually have to make a move in this game because Tony is really running the show. If you think about Survivor Kagayan, we wouldn't be where we are in this game right now if it wasn't for Tony. Tony has taken every steer. He is, he is steering the ship right here. And-, and they see it. And I think Spencer did a great job of maybe hopefully opening up their eyes and hopefully for it now for him because he's in a really sticky situation hopefully he, Tony's alliance will now turn on him and that was I think Spencer's plan Andrea did refresh my memory did anybody ever do this with Boston Rob in Redemption Island did anybody say stand up and say hey if you guys don't get rid of Rob we're voting for him because he is running the show and unless you guys get rid of him he's getting our votes in the end yeah, it, that happened. I mean, Redemption Island is a sore subject. And did it subject. change anybody's mind about anything? Did I that think work? We were so obsessed with the idea of having our alliance getting rid of them. We, because of the buddy system, we didn't even know them. So flipping over didn't really make sense because we're flipping over to people we've never talked to before. And uh, people did bring it up. Yeah. And I remember one time, even Steve. Uh, yeah, Steve, if you remember him, brought it up to the barely. girls. Yeah, barely. I barely remember <laughs> Steve. Um, brought it up to the girls and was like, you guys, like, this is our move to take out Rob. And I knew, I knew the girls weren't going to do it. They didn't want to work with me. So the whole thing was just messed up. But people did do it. Yeah, you know, I think it's, it's just, it's a real tough situation with the whole jury vote thing. I mean, in Blood versus Water, the people that were with Tyson thought that Tyson was so hated that they could take him to the end. Like Jervis thought he had a legitimate chance of winning because everybody hated Tyson because he backstabbed everybody. And in the end, all the jury was very respectful of the moves Tyson made. So you have to get down to the type of jury it is. And it, to me, it would seem that although that people are bitter, especially, you know, Morgan seems very bitter and LJ got blindsided. I'm going to go ahead and guess that they go a strategic vote, that they'll respect what Tony did instead of continuing to be resentful at Tony. For and what obviously, he did. yeah, and obviously it's going to depend who's to- who Tony's up against. Yeah. I mean, that's everything. It is. All right, let's go back to the t- talk about uh, how, t- what can you do that Tony has this idol, okay? And so a lot of people emailed me about this and said, hey, 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 this is not over because there are a couple different scenarios that could unfold where Tony does not make it to the end, where this Tyler Perry thing does not get all the way to the end, where we are able to disarm the blue wire and not have this thing go off and take Tony all the way to the final four. So here's one of the things that somebody had said, had, and honestly, I, I wish I would have uh, printed out, but there were so many different people. What if, okay? If it gets discovered that Tony has this idol, okay? First off, could, if it's not discovered, could Tony get blindsided twice, okay? So basically, the alliance goes, like basically Spencer or Tasha, they're able to get everybody together and they vote out Tony at seven, okay? Now, Tony doesn't get voted out at seven and whoever, I guess, Tony voted for ends up getting voted out. Now that he had this idol, He's still vulnerable. Could he then get voted out at six? No, he couldn't. And I'll tell you why. Because because what he did with LJ, he told Wu, hey, guess what, Wu? LJ's gunning for you. So to, to Wu, Tony is his savior. To Wu, oh, Tony saved me. So there's no way Wu's going to go back on Tony. Same thing with Trish. Trish had LJ and Tony. And now that LJ's gone, she's with Tony. I trust Tony no matter what. She said it in the episode last night. So he's got Wu and Trish no matter what. And at the six... That's three of them. So I just, it's not going to happen. What would you think if this idol is discovered? Is there a way to, wait, no, that wouldn't work either. It's Could, you wouldn't think it's likely, but could Tony potentially play himself out of this? Where, let's say Spencer puts some sort of fear in him that, hey, Tony, there's a women's alliance happening, and he's like, 
wait, what? There's a woman's alliance happening. <laughs> I got to get my alliance together and I'm going to go and get my guys. And then and then uh, it's like, hey, look, everybody, look what Tony's doing now. And everybody is like, oh, that's it. We're fed up with you, Tony. You're, go- you're going out. OK, couldn't isn't it possible that if he ends up at the bottom, he would still like he would be able to have immunity for one week. It would be almost the same as like the hidden immunity idol that he could play it and not have the votes bounce off him. But wouldn't he still be at the bottom for a second time? I mean, I just don't see those particular women working together with Chaos Cass and the, the loyalty that Trish has to Tony and, yeah, Jaffra, just, you know. Little sweet Jaffra. <laughs> okay. Hypothetic. I mean, it's possible. It's possible, I think, totally. I think, yeah, I think it could be possible. Just Wu has to wake up, and Trish seems to be very close with Tony as well, even though he blindsided LJ and didn't even tell her about it. It just seems that they're, you're yeah. thinking it's, what are you thinking? Well, I don't think it's likely, but let me give you another scenario that came across my desk this morning. Now, where, yes, this is a super-powered idol that has to be played after the the votes get read, but what if there was a split vote situation, and how would this work? Where, okay, you have seven people left in the game, what if somehow, if Tasha if Tasha and Spencer could get together I with exactly with the thing. other with the th- other three women that are left in the game, okay, could they potentially uh, do a split vote where you do some sort of some sort of a tie? Uh, I'm not sure. Could you do that with with seven? Yeah. So I thought about this actually on the way here. Is that let's say okay, let's say they take Spencer and Tasha pull strings and they do a split vote between. Uh, Tony and Wu, let's say. So then it would be three on Tony, two on Wu, and then their two, so then Tony and Wu are voting for one people, so then it's a split. Tony plays his idol and saves himself, then there's votes on Wu, and then there's votes on someone else, let's say Spencer, and then there's a re-vote, and that would be 3-3, three, three, right? Vetus, could this work? I mean, that is possible. With seven people, that's possible. That's, that's With seven people, you could do 3-2-2. Two, two. Of course you could, but... It's just, but like you it, said, unlikely. Would it flush the idol, though, if, it, let's say, the votes came in, it was three votes Woo, three votes Tony, and then, but let's... No, it has to be 3-2. Three, 3-2? Two. Three, two? Three, two, two. Okay, okay, then, okay, because then it's three votes Tony. Tony, you're voted out, and then he's not voted out, but then it's still a tie, and then we have a re-vote? Then it's still a tie between, let's say, Woo and Spencer, so then there's a re-vote, but those three people can't vote. So then you're dealing with what? Look at how excited Miss Survivor is. <laughs> on the odd, on, on, on the <laughs> off chance, and this is you know slim and none, that it was yeah. a three to three vote. I wonder if you would go to a revote before Tony would have to play it again, or I mean, he would be foolish to play it before the revote. You go to the revote, and then if he's out, then he would play it. I mean, he would never have to play it during a tie. Yeah. Right? So, all right, you so what's, flush it on a tie. what's the scenario here? So we're gonna put three votes on Tony. Okay. Three, Three votes, votes on, on Tony. Wu, two votes on off. two votes on Wu. Okay, you can do that too. No, because okay, there's so, only seven people. All right, so let's just make it easy. Let's put Cass, uh, <laughs> Trish, and Jeffra. They all vote for Tony. Okay. Yes. And then Spencer and Tasha. They vote for Wu. Okay, that's two votes for Wu. And Wu and Tony. They vote for Spencer. Spencer. Okay, so now Tony is voted out. And his and he's got, now he's got to play his idol and now we have a and now we have a revote here for now does everybody vote in the in the re in the re-vote? revote in the, no, re-vote. the only people who vote are the people who aren't on the block so it would be so now Tosh. so now Spencer and Wu wouldn't vote okay and so then so basically the votes would be Tony and then the other. Four people? Can Tony, but the only can people Tony you, vote? But though? the only people you can vote for are I the think people Tony who would are be up. able to vote because he would be back. It wouldn't be a tie between Tony anymore. So yeah, now he can save himself. So now Tony can vote, Tasha can vote, and then Cass, Trish, and uh, Jeffra can vote. And now they can vote out Wu. And Tony and doesn't then, have an idol. And then we flushed Tony's yes! idol. We did it. <laughs> so all we have to do to flush the idol is get <laughs> Tasha and Spencer. To be the new four and five instead of Wu and Tony, which they, they wouldn't do that because they'll win the game. I, I actually kind of hope that it happens. Instead of Tony playing the idol and then he gets to pick whoever he wants to go home. Yeah. Right? What we just came up with is was pretty good. What we just came up with would be way more exciting than what's going to happen. Yeah, what, what, yeah, anything we could come up with is going to yeah. be more exciting but than what's going to happen. But this is good that we flesh this out because there are people who maybe are, are not even on this season, okay? There are people who are listening to this podcast who are future Survivor players. There are people who listen to this podcast that are going to be on Survivor 29. People are going to be on Survivor 30. And this stuff is out there in the ether now. 
And we might see a season in the future where this happens because we drew this up. And you never know. Spencer and Tasha are really smart. This It could happen. It it's could happen. I think that they would love for this to happen. I don't think that I don't see why Trish, Jeffra, and uh, Cass would go along with this yet. But also, also we <laughs> have to. Is shaking his head for no, you guys. But also, we still have to discover whether or not they find out about the idol. Yeah. Now they, then, it's an idol with special powers. So could this unravel for Tony, where people say, "Hey, Tony, what what, what was that <laughs> that you had at trial?" Like, what? No, nothing. That was I found the old thing and I put a rock in the old case for the old idol. And then that's what it, what it was. I, I talk do. about my bag of tricks every tribal council. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Boy, if you were in Tony's alliance and he kept talking about his bag of tricks, would that make you nervous? Yes, completely. Like if Boston Rob is like, hey, you know, I got a bag <laughs> of tricks over here. Don't worry about what's in my bag. But don't worry. Everything about Tony it makes me nervous. And also, he's going around making spy shacks. I mean, that's taking some time. When you be like, where's Tony? Like, why is why are they just letting him run around? You'd be really paranoid like, about what he's doing. It was odd watching the episode because there was a couple times where Tony just took off and just started bolting. He's very through, fast. <laughs> bolting through the jungle. So it's speedy. dangerous. I don't know how the camera like guys that. even. Kept and you know up the camera them. crews are angry. They must have been <laughs> shouting at him. Tony, come back here. <laughs> come back. Slow down, Tony. Uh, and he's building spy shacks all over the place. Do, do you really think the spy shack worked that well? I don't know. How come Philip didn't think of building a spy shack? I'm surprised he didn't. Well, is this going to be a survivor staple in episodes to come and seasons to come? Will people be doing spy shacks season 30? It's so tricky, though, because, you know, when you're trying to spy on somebody and the camera guys are kind of making it obvious, you're like, go away. Why is their camera pointing at me? And so I don't know. That was that was hilarious. All right. Now, Andrea, I know that you have done some acting mm -hmm. in your day. They have accused Tony of being an Academy Award mm. nominee mm. actor uh, for his work in Survivor. That's what Trish and what Jeffro were talking about last night. Do you think Tony has the chops to turn his Survivor career into an Academy Award winning acting career? Oh, I, I mean, I wouldn't put anything past Tony. Very doubtful, but. <laughs> really? You think he could have a career as an actor? I, I don't know if you can take him seriously, though. I think Tony would be too paranoid that people are going to come take his roles. <laughs> I think he's so paranoid, but he is a good. He, I guess he would be a good actor. Yeah, I mean he's tricking. He's tricking people. His whole thing when he did the LJ versus Wu thing. I mean that was that was great. That was good material. Tony's, Tony is smart, and, and and I think Tony's career gives him a lot of help with that. Just sussing out you know lies from criminals, like when you when you I bust thought, people, when you pit them worker? against each other. You know it's. <laughs> Kidding. Dealing with the underbelly of society has prepared him for the game, and he is very well prepared, and he's playing an excellent game. Okay, so you think though he's killing it. I mean, Tony is oh, running the show. Tony yeah. has Tony is taking the game to where it is now. I'm not saying I love him. I would rather Spencer. I like Spencer. I like people that play in a different way. But the, these people have fallen so, so susceptible to his charm and to his magic, and they just don't see what we see. I think it's kind of what Sophie said on her on, when she came on the podcast that he's playing a very offensive game. And he just has to be on the offense. He has to be making big moves. Next move will probably be huge. I mean, that's just kind of how he has to play at this point. This is huge. It's huge. <laughs> All right. I want to play a game with the listeners here. We're talking about Tony as an Academy Award potential winning actor after his Survivor career. So as you're listening to this and you have some ideas for some uh, titles of the movies that Tony could appear in, after the fact, tweet to me and uh, as well as if you guys want to be on this too, tweet to uh, Vetus and Andrea too for hashtag Tony movies <laughs> and can, can give me the names of the movies that you would come up with for Tony. Uh, for instance, I'll give you one. How, how about the Spy Shack Redemption? Uh, okay, so that? these are original, okay, these original are movie these are titles. Yeah, come that? up with original movie titles yeah. for Tony movies. Okay. Okay. All right. I, so we'll I had some right now. One one flew over the cuckoo spy shack. <laughs> one, sure. Uh, we'll give you that. Yeah, that's that's a ding. Thank yeah. you. There you go. So uh, hashtag give me Tony movies as you listen to this podcast uh, over the next couple of days. All right. Let Let's talk about how about uh, convincing Jeffra to uh, to stay in in the game. Now, Vitas, you were somebody who was very convincing during your time in the game, and there was times where it looked like that Cat was gonna stay over you or Laura Boneham was gonna stay over you. So 
How do you convince a group of people uh, in this, in the instance of this, this was a bunch, a group of people trying to convince one person to make a decision, but how do you get people to change their mind and influence people on Survivor? Because you have to make it seem like it's the best choice for them. You know, and you're convincing somebody of something you want them to do. You cannot tell them because it's what you want them to do or it'll further your, further your game. You have to create an argument which makes sense for their game and which is going to tell them and put in their mind that they think because they make this move, it betters them and it betters their chances at winning. And it always has to be about them. You cannot try to convince somebody of what they're going to do based on any sort of your own opinion. You have to phrase it in their words and their language. That makes well, a lot of sense. Yeah, well put. That was well said. You're convincing me. <laughs> yeah. And so what could they have said to Jeffra? Um, here's, I mean, maybe what, see, when Jeffra's coming in as the four, she's clearly, okay, I'm a four and they're three tight. What they needed to do was maybe break one or two of them off to go to Jeffra and say, hey, Jeffra, I know we seem three tight, but we really don't like Spencer. Come with us. We'll get Spencer out at the four and we'll take you to the end. You have to show that there's space for her to get further in that three, that she's not just a fourth in the three, because at that point, okay, she's five in the the fifth and a five or fourth and a four. She's at the bottom either way. You have to convince her that there's fractures already. You know, take Tasha, set her aside, say, hey, I really don't like Jeremiah and Spencer. Come with me. It'll take me and you to the end, girl. Like, girl power. Something like that needed to happen instead of three on one, all trying to bring her in. That's very smart. And also, I think it seems like Jeremiah and her have a bit of a connection because she went up to him and said she wasn't going to do it. So he's the one that should have approached her and said that, you know, at least done what you were just saying there. Also, I don't know if Jeremiah is ca capable of that conversation. I don't know. It seemed like Jeremiah had kind of stopped playing a little bit at this, this last episode last night. He seemed very resigned to his fate as far as whatever was going to happen. He w was, was very sick. Model. He was oh. he, he actually got very sick after he went to Ponderosa. I watched his Ponderosa video, and he like had to be treated with IV, and he, had, he was throwing up. He had diarrhea, uh, so it okay. was like a whole it was like a whole thing. I don't know if he, if if he was staying in the game if that would happen. I don't know if it was like a reaction to the, the medication that they had been treating him with for stuff, but I don't know. Wasn't that so adorable though, the fashion model thing? Yes. I that was so. Did you Google him when he said that? Uh, I did not. I immediately Googled Jeremiah Wood model, and it was, I mean, there's some okay, rocking well, rock underwear shots on there so, for him. It was so cute though. I was just like, oh, bless his heart. All right, yeah. so what prompted you to. Oh, wait, let's Google, see what we, what we find. Google, uh, well, he Jeremiah. said, he said in the episode, if you Google my name, you Jeremiah Wood, just put model at the end, and you'll see all my stuff. And there's some straight oh, underwear wow, shots. I mean, no, rock and body, Jeremiah. When they Props say you'll you. see all his stuff, what did he mean by that? Oh, that picture right there. Mm -hmm. Which 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 one is this? Is, is is the second the second one here? This is good. That, that's a bunch. That's a bunch of stuff, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean that's his stuff. You, that's his you stuff. can't. <laughs> uh, what, what I think is much more interesting is that there's a, a really nerdy picture of Spencer that shows up. Oh, does I not look like the same guy. I, I love Spencer. You know, Spencer is really a, really a nerd at heart. He and I have been playing chess online almost, oh, almost every yeah. day ever since the season has begun. And does he whip your ass? Uh, we're, we're about even. We're both expert players. I've, I played a lot in grad school, and he's been a tournament player for years. So we're about even. I'd say he slightly has the edge on me. He has a lot going on in his life right now, so he doesn't have as much time to think as I do. But Got it. He's very good chess player. I'm kind of jealous that you get to hang out with Spencer online. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm obsessed See, with I've Spencer. See, been, I've been playing uh, Words with Friends with Cass for uh, for months, and she's really, she's terrible. She thinks there's a Y in the word fighting, so it's really, <laughs> I, I'm really just destroying Cass, Chaos Cass uh. and Words with Friends. I've been Snapchatting with LJ and Whoa. a lot of pictures of horses, and you know, yeah. I'm like, okay, stop, LJ, get it, you're a horse trainer. But you're into horses, too. I've seen pictures of you yeah. on horses. You've been yes, Snapchatting actually... with LJ, too? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> you as well? Uh, yeah, no, I grew up, I used to barrel race, and I trained horses growing up. Wait, hold on. Everybody is on social media with the former survivors except for me? Why didn't I hear about this from anybody? Who's that? I think I think you've well I think you've also Rob you've also elevated yourself to a place where you're, like, you're a little bit you know survivor royalty. Oh well, uh, Ed, I, I will never be uh, royals. That it says, uh, <laughs> and not the queen bee of Survivor. Uh, that, that's that's Andrea, Miss Survivor. Yeah, she is. Both of you. I feel like I'm in really good company. I feel like oh, I don't know if I'm quite worthy of this. No. You're, you are worthy. Yeah. You are worthy. You're worthy. Don't go fishing for compliments. Vita. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I was born and raised in L.A., so, you know, narcissism is really at my core. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so was this a good move for for Jeremiah? So apparently, like he's very uh, he's very smooth in all the in all these pictures that we see here on the on the internet. So he's gonna you know go into the game with like long hair and like uh and like a sort of like a scruffy beard, sort of trying to downplay the Abercrombiness of the pre-game Jeremiah. Is that? I think that was his plan because he obviously thought that this this information he was giving up was such crazy news and that's why he was hiding it. Yeah. Maybe he thought he was going home and that's why he wanted to, you know, let them know let them in on the secret. I think in the beginning, I mean, there's two, there's two faces of the game when it comes to likability. In the beginning, you want to be likable because you want people to work with you. And that's why you would hide something like that. Like, I'm not, you know, I'm not a fashion model because people have preconceived notions to what a fashion model is and what they're about. But at this point of the game, where likability is a liability, he should almost share with everybody, hey, guess what? I'm a fashion model. Tell everybody. And then they might think, oh, nobody's going to like Jeremiah because he's a fashion model anymore. Because at this point, you don't want to be likable anymore because people aren't going to take you to the end with them. I don't know if it's a big enough thing. I mean, it's so not, many. It's the not thing really. is, like, everyone Wait, knows you, that. Everyone knows you're that. Talking about his pictures again. <laughs> yeah, that's a ding. Um, <laughs> uh, no, I'm saying I don't oh. think I don't think that if someone told me, oh, I'm a fashion model, that wouldn't change anything. Like when someone tells you you're, they're a cop, you start to think, or a lawyer, oh, you start to think different things. But if someone's like, hey, I'm a model, you're like, okay. I mean, a lot of people on Survivor are models, especially if you're on the beauty tribe. I don't know. I, I think that, that affects that... you. Like you actually, if someone you found out someone was a fashion model, that would change the way that. A uh, fashion model or an intellectual, I would say I'd, I'd probably rather hang out with an intellectual or somebody that, you know, I'm, and that's not to say that's there aren't, strategy, they're, they're, strategy they're, those wise. two things aren't mutually exclusive, but I do think that there are preconceived notions toward fashion models. People think they tend to be ditzy and very hey, all about themselves. Fabio was a fashion model and he won, he won the freaking game. Yeah. So I think that's a good track record for fashion models. Now let's l have a model off real quick between Jeremiah Wood and and uh, Jay Byers. So, oh. Miss, mm. Miss Survivor, who has the leg up here? Jay Byers. Jay Byers. Is it, yes. is it close? No. Is, is Jeremiah Wood, real name? Is it what? Jeremiah Wood. That's his real name? That's his real name. Okay. Yeah. Right? Great it's name. Not a model name? Great name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So, Jeremiah, Jeremiah Wood, not in the same class as Jay Byers as far as male modeling goes? I mean, that's my opinion. Jeremiah is very attractive. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But Jay Byers has, I think, to me, Jay Byers is one of the most attractive survivor men. I think they're in the same class, but I do agree oh, they're with in the, her. Yeah, Jay, they're... Jay, Jay is a beautiful man. Hey, Jeremiah you... is definitely a model and he, he looks yeah. great, but Jay, yeah. we, yeah. I mean, have you, have you ever met Jay Byers? I did. I got to meet him at the finale of Blood vs. Water. He came to hang out who with else um, can we, Who else Culpepper. can we Google? Well, what you, about... know who, you know who else has an impressive uh, Google image search? How about, how about Vetus? <laughs> Do I have to search model also? No, you know, just uh, look at those poses, yeah. Vetus. No, Vetus, it's very, it's very tasteful because he does a lot of sh shots in black and white. Thank you, that thank you. Tasteful. I, if you look at me, no pictures in black and white. We Not go, tasteful. Do you go to sepia? Or? Or? <laughs> no, no. Uh, okay, so let's see. Let's start to get into some questions that I have for. Uh, we years. know. I actually read a question on Twitter, oh, and it kind it. of segues from the last question about who's hotter. You know, somebody I think asked Andrea, was it who do you think would be Mister and Miss Survivor from this season? Oh, from this season. Yeah, if we had to go this season alone. I mean, a lot of it always depends on fan base, but I think LJ maybe. Mister. Mister and Miss probably. Hmm. That's that would be hard. That would be tough. Oh man! I mean, maybe Ma Jeffra's going farther, and I think Jeffra's very likable and sweet. I think Jeffra. Jeffra has no More fan base. Yeah, did, did she make oh, the wait. Did, no yeah, fan but, support for? Jeffra. Okay, but what about Morgan? Does she have? Yes, Morgan. So Morgan be, has the fan. That would be the support. <laughs> wait, you're right. <laughs> Hashtag okay. Team Papaya. And, all, and Morgan can post some pictures for votes, and I think yeah, everyone would go. I, well. So Morgan and LJ. Actually, that makes a good couple. It's a runaway from Miss Survivor. I, I think so. Yeah. I think so. The question is going to be: Is is Morgan going to be in the friend of low uh, persuasion of maybe not be interested in, in the Miss Survivor? I don't know with her. We she don't may know. Be, yeah, she may not be. You know, she may not care. That'll be, <laughs> you know, if she wants it. And, and again, from the edit that we saw, it doesn't seem like she's super motivated about <laughs> things. I can just Come see Morgan us. being like, whatever. Yeah, I mean, she really hasn't had to work for a lot in her life, has she? No. We, we don't believe so, but who knows? We, who knows the real story? I mean, that's self-proclaimed. Yes. That, I guess she hasn't had to do too much. Uh, okay. 
let's let's start to talk about some of the questions here. And uh, I want to get uh, Andrea involved here as we pepper Vetus with questions. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's let's start off with uh, Karen Gill, who wants to know uh, why does everyone continue to listen to Tony, especially if they are aware that he is slimy. Is Tony slimy? He is so slimy, but here's but here's what's making his game is great. It because he's been hanging out. Here's the bushes why he's playing long? a great game because I think he's slimy. And if I were to, if I were to play again, it would be very difficult to me to want to align with somebody like that. But he is so good at not letting his slime show. He lets it show to us. Like when he does his side interviews, we see it. We see exactly what he's doing. But you can tell when he starts running. He walks the first hundred steps away from camp. He walks nonchalantly, and then he starts to sprint. <laughs> nobody really knows he's building a spike. We see all these things, but nobody sees it. So that slime, unfortunately, LJ saw it, and he was gone. Nobody else really sees it. Uh, Tony running is my favorite thing of the entire of the entire show. All right, why don't you take this question from Justin Tan? Justin Tan says, "What can Tony do to deflect attention now that he's viewed as the biggest threat to win the game?" What can Tony do to deflect? I I think just can. I mean, what Tyson did on Blood versus Water is really smart. Continue to convince people that I'm hated. I have made these moves, which makes me a hated person on the jury. You know, I blindsided LJ. LJ doesn't like me. I was the one that orchestrated these things, so keep me around. I'm not going to get any jury votes. That would probably be a good sign. Keep focusing on who's going to win the jury votes, Spencer and Tasha. We need to get them out. They have so many friends on the jury. That's what he needs to do. Do you think that Spencer is the next one on his list? I think Spencer's got to be the next one on I his list. I think so, too. Spencer or Tasha. And then I, I can also see him turning on someone else, someone like Wu. He's, he always is looking for that next, the next biggest threat to him. I feel like Spencer or Tasha, one of those two is definitely out next week. Yeah. And then I think there's a chance for the other one. Whatever one survives this could actually potentially go further. But what would be great is if one of them wins immunity and then the idol's back in play because Spencer played it last time. Maybe he could accidentally stumble upon it again. That would be it. That would be a good episode. Okay. This question is from Luis Johnson who wants to know, why doesn't Vetus say Adas? Uh, I always grew up saying Aris. So, you know, in Lithuanian, you roll the Rs, so it's Adas. But uh, Adas has only been something he's been trying to make public the last year or so. So I'm just used to calling him Aris. And even Probes was used to calling him Aris. Like the first, I mean, he's, he mispronounced his name, I think, the first half of the season even. Oh, wait, so can I call him Aris if I want? Yeah, I, I mean, we've all called him Aris. All of Aris's best <laughs> friends call him Aris. At home, it's Aris. Yeah. But it's, you know, okay, when he introduces him himself Aris, to new I, people, it's Aris. I Otis. keep having to think and be, oh, Aris, okay. But I, he's Aris. I'm it's like the people Otis. that go to, a, you know, to get Mexican food and they say, I would like a burrito. Uh, <laughs> please give me some chips and guacamole. It's, it's Aris. We're in America. We don't need to roll the R. Okay. Uh, why don't you take this question from Ron Chan? Okay. Ron Chan says, Vitas, do Rob as a podcast listeners get a discount at Yoga Works or Power Yoga East? Yep. <laughs> Is there a promo code for the Rob as a podcast listeners? If you come take my yoga class, uh, just make sure you come see me before class starts. And if you're a Rob has a podcast listener, I will get your first class free at Yoga Works. Okay. Or Power Look Yoga East that. for that matter. Or I Power Yoga East for that matter. I actually, it's funny, I was shooting a short film out here and somebody on the crew has taken classes with you. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I'm fortunate to teach at two great studios in LA. So um, if you ever want to come take class with me, I mean, my classes are pretty advanced. If you're brand new to yoga, I would say probably not the best idea to come to my class first. But if you've taken some yoga and you want to get your butt kicked, make sure you bring a towel and then just come and say that you've listened to Rob Has a Podcast and you're in. First class free. Wow, do you do, you do yoga, Andrew? Yes, I do. Wow. Uh, well, I'm laying the gauntlet down to you then, Miss Survivor. Okay, let's go. Do you let's think let's you do could s- handle my class? I think I could. Really? Yeah. Let's see. Make a muscle. All right, now make one for real. Now, come on, really <laughs> make one. What a flirt. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, let's go. Well, let's go, go, go into that uh, subset of questions. Okay. Uh, Frank Clark was Dearest Vetus, did you ever end up hooking up with that hot little yummy Katie oh, Collins? Gosh. Wasn't Tina trying to hook you up? Well, first of all, thank you for addressing me as dearest Vitas. I do appreciate that. Um, and no, me and Katie never hooked up. I love Katie. Katie is so sweet. And we cuddled and we're friends. And we continue to talk um, weekly, at least. Uh, but she's great. Unfortunately, we live in different cities. We never hooked up. No. It's funny that someone just asked that. That's Frank but, Clark. But, but, you know, but that was Vintage a big... Frank Clark. That, and, I, and I will talk about you, that. But would you have been honest, though, if you had hooked up with her? That's the thing. Yeah, you know, a gentleman doesn't really kiss and tell. Yeah, but, but this uh, is Rob as a podcast. And everybody this is, is... Once you come into the dojo, then you're... This is a, you know, spin-free zone. But that was something that I played up on my season. Like, I saw that there was an in there for me with 
Katie's mom. Tina wants Katie to find a man. And as soon as I presented myself as that option, you know, they I, said, jumped I on saw that. Katie Collins at the reality rally last weekend. She looks better now than she did on, on the show, which is so often the opposite. I, I don't think it's the opposite for smart city girls that are strong and independent. I think for maybe people that live in the middle of nowhere and just have kids and blow up over time, that's you know a different reality. But Katie's a New York girl. She's smart. She's educated. She's eating right. She's exercising. She's, I mean, she's a catch. I will say the one thing, a little bit of a turnoff, not watching this season. What? Oh, she didn't. <sighs> Not watching this. Oh, I, I'm disappointed. It depends on our reason. Sometimes it's hard. I know I. it was really hard for me to watch the Philippines because it gave me this anxiety because I knew my season was coming up next. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes the season right after your season is really hard because it's so fresh. So sometimes that's the case. I, to be honest, I love watching others. I didn't like watching my season. Oh, I hated it. Like, give me somebody else's season. I love Survivor. I've been a fan so much longer than Aris. I mean, I've been a fan from the beginning. <laughs> is, Just calling him out. Is Otis the poser Survivor fan in the family? No, Aris is definitely a fan now but I was a fan season one season two season three like I was watching it and Aris was you know you know masturbating in his bedroom and I was all about Survivor <laughs> the whole time it was on I mean I don't you know he was 14 at that time I don't know yeah, now how, how old he was back then all right uh, let's take this question from Felipe Shimon all right so Felipe Shimon says a great looking dude was second juror last season a great looking girl was second juror this season Okay, that was a statement. Also, had Caleb and Hayden flipped back after you and Aris was voted out, who would be your final three? Tina and Katie and yourself, or Hayden and Caleb and yourself? All right, well, let's take the two parts there. So, uh, first, po first part. Yeah, I was confused. The first thing was uh, well, who was second statement? jury the season before mine? Well, I, I'm not sure. Uh, Philip, Philip Shepard. Was that? Yeah. Is that right? <laughs> Philip uh, was now, jury. you were openly. Uh, Seemed like you were courting Morgan on Twitter, it seemed like, seemingly, uh, when you had said that, hey, a great looking person got second jury member this season and a great looking person uh, last season. Is that is that what you were doing? Is that the intention there? Uh, I mean, I think I, I've never met Morgan. All I do is I, I see, I've seen her on the show. We've never met in person. Vetus, are you trying to climb the papaya tree? <laughs> I mean, I do love papayas. She has a boyfriend, though. That's yeah. a boyfriend. That's, that's, that's the out. thing. Um, and I was flirting with her. I, yeah. I, I got to admit to it. Hands but, off the produce, buddy. But you know what? There's actually, I mean, uh, in general, I'm a flirt. And now, now I'm sitting to Miss Survivor, and I'm seeing something even better than, you know, Miss Papaya over here. So, you know, <laughs> oh, my, oh, my view has changed. Papaya king. And there's so many, I mean, Survivor casting, got to give it up to Survivor casting. Beautiful, smart, interesting women go on Survivor. So I am fortunate to be a part of this family now as a as a single guy because I get to be amongst us. He's just throwing it out there. They, they let the fox in the hen house. <laughs> now they can't get him out. Who would my final three have been? You really think I would have taken Hayden to the final three? Absolutely not. It would have been Tina and Katie. And they were, Tina's already won before, and that's great. I'm not going to give it to another winner. Katie didn't really do that so much. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, Katie is not going to watch the next season yeah. of Survivor. And like, <sighs> yeah, that's it. No, yeah, you would have one in that situation. <laughs> that would that argument would have sealed it? You know, unfortunately, you know, I, don't, I know you feel like this, but you play the game and I remember when I knew I was getting voted out and I really thought I exhaust, had exhausted every option and then when you get out, there's other options like, oh wait, I, I could have done this, these like last ditch options. So for you future players out there, it's never over. Like you really, just this last night's episode, Jeremiah could have done more. They could have done more to figure out where the votes were going. Like make sure you've pushed all the way to the end to try to finagle your way just another few days in the game. Oh yeah, especially after you play. I remember my first season, the second time I was voted out, I was sitting there and I just thought, okay, I'm pretty much done. Like there's nothing else I could do. There's always something. Go just cause a ruckus. Do anything. I Dump think, out the rice. Don't, yeah, freak out. <laughs> do something. Some, you know, there's always options. Andrea, the whole dumping out the rice incident this season, would that bring back scary flashbacks for you? Oh, my goodness. Yes, it did. I did actually. It was funny. When Brandon dumped out the rice, I was having a very emotional day. So I remember there's a scene of me crying and Brenda consoling me. But it, was, it was freaky because Brandon went... A wall, and that was kind of what you saw with this season as well. It's everything out there. Rice is everything. It's everything. It is. That's all you're eating. I mean, it's a lot. We had a lot of fish and a lot of coconuts, and we actually had papayas on our beach too. Papayas and limes. Whoa. What? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. We had some coconuts, but rice and, co and coconuts was all we had. Okay. 
also, Andrea, while you're here, we had the scene earlier this season where Cass was babysitting Spencer while he was supposed to be looking for the idol, and she was supposed to be watching him, and Spencer found an idol while Cass was supposed to be watching him. What were you doing? Hashtag SMH. What? What was I doing? Yes. What was your re- your reaction oh. to Cass letting oh, somebody was find my reaction. an idol? I was like, what was I doing? Like when? Uh, oh, it was it was funny because if you're going to be stalking, like when I went and stalked Malcolm to the well to make sure he didn't find the idol, I was watching him. I was like sitting right next to him, would not let him do anything. So she's right next to him, and he finds it. Like Cass, definitely a SMH. And good job, good job for Spencer. I think that one goes more to props to Spencer than bad on Cash. She was standing next to him. I mean, you can't be expected to just stare at them for hours at a time continuously. Why, Andrew? The moment, doesn't, the moment it, she yeah. looked away, the moment she looked away. I mean, he was I really. Was, good I will sit on the well for away? days. Yeah, <laughs> Andrea wouldn't look away. No, I didn't look away. Spencer, you, you, I I think it's smart. Now when people go looking for idols, you I think it's really smart to follow them. Yeah. And why why wouldn't they do that more in previous seasons? I feel like a lot of times... Well, that's why when you're going to go look for idols is you don't tell anybody you're going to look for idol. You make sure you're going to go take a nice long walk and you well, have that's... production help you. And when you go off, say, okay, I'm going to go off behind now. I don't know. I just think... I'm just surprised that Tony is able to go run and people aren't wondering where he is. Tony. Can't, can't Tony just say, uh, hey, guys, I got to go get cardio in. I'm, I'm training for a 5K. I got to go run now. I got to go get some new, uh, some new parts of this tribal tattoo a little bit further down my shoulder. Do you like Tony's tattoo? No, I'm not a tattoo fan. Yeah, why not? I just, I, I don't, I don't know. Do you have tattoos? No, I don't have any tattoos. It's just not my thing. Rob, you got any I'm tattoos? I'm fi- considering Rob one. has, are you? Yes, I'm considering, I have a couple different designs that I'm considering. You should do a Rob has a podcast tattoo. <laughs> it's your life. That's probably what I should do. Um, okay, let's take this question. Uh, give Vetus this question from from Mike Bloom. Mike Bloom, how does Vetus feel about the abundance of balance challenges this season, considering he couldn't face any in Blood vs. Water? Mm. Is this a sore spot? I mean, I feel like with my my daily yoga practice, I, I would have been pretty damn good at some of the balance stuff. Um, I think balance challenges are great because it really balance challenges are equalizers as far as men and women are concerned, and so often, I mean strong men are voted out because they're perceived as threats and then you get these challenges where strong men you know they really haven't they really have no advantage and especially balance so I like challenges that kind of equalize the playing field because it means that strong men aren't necessarily threats anymore let me give you a follow up question this is from Ari Feinberg who says uh, this season so far all of the immunity challenges have been more willpower slash balance based while all the reward challenges were more physically active do you think that the producers are consciously choosing to do this because they want everyone to have an equal shot at immunity and if so is this a good choice or a bad choice I like to mix it up. I think it's good to have some balance. I mean, if they were all balanced from here on in, I think that would be crazy. But I, I go back to Aris's first season, which was Panama, the first exile island. And Terry Dietz, you know, naval aviator, top gun fighter pilot, was killing it almost every single immunity challenge. And had the Tyler and Perry then idol. That, and then, yeah, he had Tyler Perry idol. And then final three comes, and he doesn't have the idol anymore. And guess what? It's a balance challenge, and he finally loses. So I think it's important to throw those in here and there. But... Yeah, I mean, mix it up. Do some strength. Do some intellect. I love memory challenges. I love ones that are all about puzzles and about that mental stamina in the game. You know, because Survivor is much more outwit than it is anything else. So I like I, challenge people on that level. I'm a huge fan of the balance challenges, and because I'm really stubborn, and that's the ones I've won on my all yes. the seasons. Is well, you won that they redid the challenge that you won from Caramo and that Wu won, and I got a hundred emails about, hey, how come Wu had special special shoes? You didn't need special shoes to win that challenge. No. Is that the water balance challenge? Yeah. Well, and also Brenda and I, Brenda and I were going for four hours, I believe, and they were off right away. But they they had wind. Yeah. That's a great challenge. I would love I would oh. love to participate in some of those challenges. I mean, I love balancing. I, I I slack line almost you know every every week down by the beach. So I really like balance. Okay. This is a very interesting question. Uh, this is from Jason Lee, and he wants to know. I don't think, not the, not the guy from uh, My Name is Earl. Uh, it was brought up on the podcast that part of the reason that there might be so much chaos this season is that there are no returning players to sort of rein in any of the players with crazy plans. 
having played with returning players and Andrea having been a returning player as well. Can Andrea and Vetus provide any insight into how much of that is a factor and whether crazier plans get shot down by veterans who they played with? Obviously, Boston Rob controlled Redemption Island season fairly well, but perhaps there was more going on behind the behind the scenes than we actually saw. So is that a thing that this is a season with all new players and that there's more people doing crazier things because there's no returning player to say, uh, hey, you know, actually the better the strategy is to do this or not on my watch or anything like that? Yeah, I, I do think well, it depends. Like definitely in Redemption Island, uh, Rob was able to make sure that nothing went crazy. Like the one huge move was maybe at the merge when we voted out Matt Alrod when he came back in. But other than that, he had everyone on lockdown. But I, I think to an extent, if you had a couple of returning players in there that might maybe could convince Tony that he's going frantic and not necessarily making the right moves. I mean, not even necessarily convince Tony that he's going frantic, but convince other people you don't want to align with this person. Look, at this point, it's five to two. They could still get rid of Tony and be four to two. You know, it's it's people like that that I think be playing, you realize you don't want to align with just because they're loose cannons. And, and they're sort of, you know, you're at the whim of their emotional balance or imbalance. So I, I do think that a lot of these new players coming up, they want to make big moves. It's all about big moves. I want to get asked back to play again. I got to make big moves. I got to make an impression on people. I mean, back in the day, it was get numbers and stay with your numbers no matter what. If you have numbers, stay with your numbers no matter how much you dislike the people you're with. Like ride that as far as you can. I think it's changing. I think now everyone wants to make big moves and already be thinking way ahead. And even, I know when I went back for Karamoan, I was, I would, consider my threats that were even in my alliance. I mean, I targeted Corinne like way earlier than I should have. And a lot of that happened because I was, it's just a new way of playing the game, I think. Well, how much of that is sort of the atmosphere that you guys are brought into? I mean, on the episode last night, Jeff Probst, after he snuffs Jeremiah's torch, he comes out and says, all right, well, you know, we had another tribal council. So, hey, big moves. They're happening all season, and if you want to get to the end, you're going to have to keep making them. Yeah, I remember I saw that. He said, and there's probably going to be another big move next next time or something. I was like, no, there's yeah. not. There's but not but I feel another like big that move. we're really saying that the culture of Survivor is big moves. And at the Survivor finale for Blood vs. Water, Jeff Probst stood up and basically like applauded Sierra and said, hey, Sierra, you make big moves. That's how you play Survivor. Now, I don't know if that necessarily is true, though. I mean, they're a lot, it's a lot more interesting to watch. Yeah. I mean, I like when people are making moves even if they're stupid. Like, Cass's move was dumb, in my opinion. And yet... I, I love big moves because I'm, I'm a person that podcasts about Survivor. So I hope there's big moves every week. But I'm not sure that if I was advising a person, if I was, like, you know, in somebody's ear who was playing Survivor, I don't know if necessarily big move every week was the way to go. No, I mean, it has to be the right time. I think if you, you can make one huge move and you think you can still win the game. But Tony's trying to make a big move every time. Yeah. It's It's... You got to make a move at some point, but I think con continuing to be the one who's orchestrating big moves just puts a bigger target on your back, and you, it's something you don't want. The most important thing in Survivor is to keep the target off your back, but at some point you do have to steer the ship in the direction that you want it to go, otherwise you're just a passenger in somebody else's. Hey, Randy Rice wants to know, I think I know what Vetus is all about, but just to solidify that, Vetus, what's your favorite attraction at Disneyland, either park? Either park? We talking about Disney World, Florida, because I've never been there. Okay. Uh, um, Disneyland. What's my favorite attraction? You know that stuff. I haven't been to Disneyland in a long time. I think I always liked Space Mountain, but I don't know. I maybe even on top of that, the teacups are the teacups are all time. I mean, I, I can I have memories since I was a little kid of the teacups. I've never been. Okay. What surprised. about you, Rob? Um, I am not a big. If you, if you could imagine this, I'm not a big crazy ride guy. So I like, you know, a couple of the things like, uh, you know, the uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, the Haunted Mansion, uh, Thunder Mountain Railroad, stuff, stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, I don't want to go upside down or anything like that. You never been to Disneyland? I've never been. Isn't oh, that so sad? Someone, sad. You know, someday someone will take me in. Somebody. Some, somebody. Some, someday your prince will come. <laughs> somebody who lives uh, in L.A. will take you. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so, so, how about this question? This is from uh, Zeong Peng Lung. Why don't you take that question? It's <laughs> a great name. Uh, he says, what are your thoughts on the gray area between jurors and the players? So I think what he's probably talking about is when... Wait, wait, actually, there's, a, there's oh. a, a second line. Oh, there's a second line. 
In your season, Blood vs. Water, the situation occurred in final six with the rock draws. Editing, sh- editing shows the jurors, Aris, Caleb, and yourself laughing and nodding heads. This somehow influenced the flip in Sierra. Older seasons, like the Amazon, the jurors were not even allowed to wink at the players. Okay. Does, does production allow that to fly where the jury is now the cheerleaders for the big moves? And so if somebody's considering a big move and, and basically the jury is now like the audience on the prices, right? And screaming like, five dollars, five dollars, <laughs> five, do it, do it, five votes. I do think there's a gray area, um, like he said, he, she said, um, but... It, you know, pr- the rule is you're not allowed to talk. I think production wants to happen. Anything that will make the show better. And in that case, Sierra wasn't quite sure she wanted to draw rocks at that point. And so every time she looked over to us, we made sure we wanted her to draw rocks. Mm. Like, uh-huh. And every time say- <laughs> Hayden would say, you haven't done anything yet, we'd be like, mm-mm, haven't done anything yet. So we were really coaxing her hard to do it. But, yeah. you know, they were, you know, anything more. I think one time at some point, it, it didn't even make air. Ara said something in that tribal council or a later tribal council. And just Jeff turned to Aris and said, shut up, Aris. And, you know, they're very strict as far as us speaking out at all. Yeah, but I I don't know. I was on the jury and I wanted Cochran to win and I was kind of giving him looks of like who I thought he should take out. We had like a weird eye connection. He like understood what I was saying. Like I was pretty much telling him, you have to sit next to Don because everyone hates her. So you got to take Don to the end. And we were doing like a look thing. And we actually, after the fact, he was like, no, I understood what you were saying. He knew he was probably going to take Don anyway. But there's, I don't know, I think production the look should probably thing be is just so hard to understand. Yeah, because then you're wondering, wait, are you saying that I should keep, should keep them? Should keep them or get rid of them? He says he understood, but I mean, who knows? He's probably like, what is Andrew doing? She's crazy. Yeah, he's very adept at reading body language in Cochrane. Mm-hmm. Uh, Thomas Forsey wants to know, has anyone ever had their social game change as much post-merge as Trish? She went from having her presence in the game be enough for a tribe mate to quit to convincing casts to flip, doing subtle damage control on Jeffra, and making bonds with potential jury members and her Pilates instructor. And Steven and I talked a lot about Cass, I'm sorry, about Trish last night. So what do you think about Trish and her story so far this season? And is she a potential winner here? I could see Trish winning. I think she seems like well-liked. She had that move with Cass. I, I think a lot of it's going to depend on what happens after this point. But it's true. She's had a lot of different situations happen. I think she's playing well. I like Trish. Yeah, you know, I actually read Stephen's article uh, this morning about the episode, and I I hadn't even thought about that much of Trish until I read it. And he made some great points. I mean, it really is true. Trish is doing some great stuff. I just don't know if everybody else will acknowledge it, if the other contestants see, oh, Trish is actually playing the game for us. They just see her as somebody who's a number that they're voting with. I I mean, I just, I'm not sure if there's there's a group awareness of how well she's playing. How can Trish not be seen as the sherry in front of the jury? She has to make another big move and take control. And also she can't be next to Tony at the end. I don't think it depends who she's up against. But could she be a potential Natalie White where people are so irritated with Tony and Trish comes off as sort of the more palatable alternative to Tony? Natalie was so sweet, though. And now Trish, what Trish needs to do for these last few days in the game is go talk to everybody and ask them about their lives. Like, tell me about what you do at home. She really needs to create friendships out there with every single person, whether she's with them or not. Maybe not out of nowhere, but she needs to start getting more likability. I don't see people loving Trish at the end. Oh, I want to spend weekends with Trish. I want to go out and visit Trish in Boston. I mean, I don't see those kind of relationships for her right now. She's playing a great game. Props to you, Trish. But I mean, if she's smart, she's going to know the two people she wants to be up against, and then that'll be everything. She got to bring Cass and Cass and Jeffra. Yeah, Cass and Jeffra, she'd win. I don't know. Would she win against? I mean, would she win against Jeffra? I think she'd win against Jeffra. Jeffra. I would. Jeffra wouldn't win. I would think so. Jeffra. Jeffra's got LJ. I think, I think Jeffra but and maybe Jeremiah. No, I think Jeffra and Cass are the only two that couldn't win. I don't think that Jeffra w- could articulate her game yeah, to the she, jury. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't think so. It'd be the questions of who are you and what did you do, and she wouldn't be able to answer any of them. I don't even think that they would be as like negative to Jeffra. I just think like uh, Jeffra, could you tell us like one thing that you did? And she's like. Uh, Surely. Uh, <laughs> well, I was going to yeah. flip that one time in the cave, but then I decided not to. And then I thought to go back. Yeah. And I told Jeremiah, so I was truthful. Yeah. I think that if she went to the end, I think it would be probably a li- l- similar to whatever questions Natalie got. I was just going to uh, say, Natalie Tenerelli, because she's a s- really sweet girl, but just didn't have a lot of time. Uh, didn't do a lot of strategy. Yeah, nobody was like, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, that nobody was like, Natalie, what did you even do? 
Uh, no, no one was too mean to her. Yeah, I mean, I, I know I was, was everyone you know, gets a little bitter and then, but no one was so nasty to her. I don't think I'm trying to remember. I think I might've been a little mean, but I was bitter that, because I just got voted off and there was a day. And so I was a little mean to her, but it was because I was at the time I was upset, but we're friends now. Okay. Well that brings us to this question from, uh, Katrin Stutz wants to know Trish versus Tony versus Wu in a final tribal council. Who wins and why? Who would they vote for? I mean, that's what I think is going to happen at the final tribal. Um, Trish, Tony, and Wu. And I just, it, it depends. It depends on the sensibilities of the jury. Are people going to be bitter? Are people going to respect that Tony, you know, made all the big decisions? Are people going to be bitter at Tony and give it more to somebody who, like Trish, who helped out, or Wu, who might be likable? I mean, and unfortunately, a lot of that, you don't know what the jurors are talking about and their perception. Yeah, no idea. It, I think I would actually like it to be that final tribal council because that's more interesting than a you know Jeff or Cass Trish. I think I don't think Wu. Would, I think it would be their Tony or Trish in that instance. But Wu was so likable. He falls from trees. And yeah, but Spencer did kind of zing him a little bit last night with his vote. Hey, dude, you're voting <laughs> total for you. bummer. Total bummer. That was great. Yeah, we like that. We like impressions when you vote. Um, all right, one last question. Edward Morris wants to know: Are either Spencer or Tasha going to be able to run the table to the finals? I'm hoping so. You never know. You saw in the preview. They could pull Tony back over and make something happen. Wasn't he trying to get Tony back over because he was blaming Jeffro? But are they going to? I mean. If Spencer or Tasha can get to the end, they'll win. And that's all they need to do is get to the end. Tony can get to the end. Trish can get to the end. We can get to the end. They have more work to do as far as just more than getting to the end. I feel but like if we're Spencer too far or Tasha out. can get I, to the end. If they, were at, if they could get like two more weeks and get to five, I feel like they have a... Uh, they'd have a fighting chance, but they're at seven. It's too many. It's yeah. day, yeah, it's day 28. They have to get 11 more days. And Tony is smart enough that he knows Spencer and Tosh are great in challenges and they would win. So he'd be kind of an idiot to not vote out one of them. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it. I think one of them has a chance. The two of them definitely don't. But, but it's, it's been a season where we said, oh, this is what's definitely going to happen one week to the next, and it's been very unpredictable. It's gotta been keep, a great season. Got to keep Loving making it. big moves. All right. Uh, all right, so let's start to uh, to wrap things up. Uh, Miss Survivor, it's been great to see you here in person. I know. Thanks for having me. And Vetus, it's been great to finally do a proper podcast with you. You know, I, I felt slighted. Aris has been a part of this podcast so many times. Yes. And I have never been a part of this podcast. I, I mean, I appeared briefly when Aris and right. I were running together for Mr. Survivor, and I appeared on my exit interview, but that wasn't even with you. That was so, with, with the great Josh you know, this Wiggler. This is a staple in Survivor culture. He did a, uh, Josh did a very good job, though. He did a great job, but Rob, it wasn't with you. It wasn't, it wasn't with me. No, no, I'm finally getting to talk to you. Finally. Well, it's, you've only been off the show for one season. It's not like I skipped a season with you all right yeah and i had so many people from your season and then we you know we would have had you on earlier in the season but we had yeah you know, i don't like, that's all yeah. that matters I'm, hey i'm here now and i'm just you, learning you i just want you to out, know i'm you grateful called me out about the mr survivor instagram thing which <laughs> totally well, threw me out well, i like starting i like starting things no but i did have out. it you know what i'm gonna we're gonna be done this i'm gonna put it back up there uh-huh. All right. There you go. So by the time you're listening to this it will say it so vs will sound wrong are you he, are you following me on instagram uh i think i am you are okay yeah I'll make sure to follow you then too. Okay. Yeah. Are I you am. on social media? I, geez, <laughs> yes. Yes. I saw you uh, holding up a baby like the Lion King at the White House. Yes. I was at the Capitol building holding up my son saying, you could be a congressman too. Yeah. One day all the, the land that the light touches will be yours. Yes. Yeah. So very, very good. Vetus and I are new dads. We're going to have a sitcom yeah. on Fox soon with Tony. <laughs> with Tyler Tony. Perry's going to produce it. New Survivor dads. Yeah. If Tyler Perry produces it, you'll probably be on it. Yeah, of For course. Sure. He loves you. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you guys uh, so much. And we'll talk to you again soon. Not every, not you listeners. Don't, you don't go, you don't go anywhere. Okay. All right. That was an awkward <laughs> way to stop. All right. All right. Well, guys, thank you so much. <laughs> right. I'll, I'll, I'll fix that. Thank, yeah, th th yeah. Thanks again, guys. All right. Yeah. That, cool. 